Welcome to this quick introductory video about link analysis. In this video we will talk a bit about the prehistory of search engines. In subsequent videos we will talk about two classic ranking methods, the page rank algorithm and the hits algorithm. Our motivating question is, how do we organize the World Wide Web? The web is a huge corpus of information, pages linking to pages via hyperlinks. So how do we make this corpus navigable? In other words, how do we find the information that we need? And how can we determine whether that information is reputable? To answer this question, we need to go back in time to the mid-90s. This is when ordinary people were starting to get online using dial-up connections. People were using email for the first time and surfing the web. The World Wide Web was a vast information frontier. The first attempt at organizing the web matched how people organized information before the internet became a daily part of their lives. In particular, before the internet connected us, people used their phones to access information. And phones were very different back then. First, they were hardwired into your house. Second, you actually used to use a phone to talk to another person. And so when you wanted to find something you needed, you used a phone book. Residential numbers were listed alphabetically by last name. And there were also massive yellow pages directories where you could look up businesses by category. This is where you could, quote, let your fingers do the walking. So the first successful information websites were web directories like Yahoo. But this method was ripe for innovation. Creating these directories were labor intensive. They were human curated, not automatically generated. So it took a lot of labor to keep them current. Second, using these directories was inefficient. You had to know the proper taxonomy of categories and subcategories to find what you needed. For example, in the phone book, plumbers were a subcategory of personal services. I remember being baffled by some of these overarching categories when I was a kid. So human curated web directories were doomed to failure. There was no way for them to keep up with the growth of the World Wide Web. Plus, they didn't take advantage of the dynamic scripts that could respond to input from the user rather than display static content. You may actually be surprised to know that web directories continued to exist until 2017. I guess some people loved their artisanal internet experience. The second attempt at organizing the web was information retrieval. This is the methodology that libraries use to organize a vast corpus of knowledge. These methods process the content of pages to determine their value, including self-identifying topic keywords provided by the web page authors themselves. But there's a problem. A library can treat its corpus of data as reputable and take it at face value. For example, if a book claims to be about Barack Obama or mentions that president many times, then it is safe to assume that the book is relevant to people interested in Barack Obama. But the web is not a cooperative endeavor. It is a competitive marketplace for attention. So people are motivated to use any means at their disposal to draw attention to their website. That includes misrepresenting their content or including hidden content to hijack web crawlers that process those pages. So this means that we need a way to organize the information of the web without trusting the actual information on the pages themselves. And how is this even possible? This brings us to the foundational idea behind modern search engines. When we look at the network structure of the web, we can recognize that it is self-organizing. When one page links to another, this is an implicit endorsement of the quality of the target page. So if we want to find high quality web pages, we should look at the ones with high in degree. Furthermore, we can do even better if we use the feedback loop definitions that we saw in algebraic centrality measures like eigenvector centrality and cat's centrality. In other words, links from other important pages should count more than links from less important pages. In our next two videos, we will talk about two different ways to implement this idea. Both emerged in the late 1990s. The first is PageRank, the algorithm that launched Google into the stratosphere. The second is the HITS algorithm, which remains just as influential with the scientific community.